Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being out on a terribly rainy night. On a rainy Saturday night, we're here to share a loving message. We're out here in the rain, sharing the rainy evening oh with you. Hey! We want to bring you the good news of Jesus Christ. We want to share the good news, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. There's no other name given unto man whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ is the only name that saves. We can't be saved by the Buddha. We can't be saved by Ganesh. We can't be saved by Muhammad. We cannot be saved by any other name but the name of Jesus Christ because He's the one and only Lord and Savior. Now, Jesus Christ, the gospel message is not popular in 2019. I very much doubt it's going to be popular in 2020 either because as these days darken, as the last days within which we're all living become increasingly evil, the last thing people want to hear is the good news of Jesus Christ. We're not here to preach religion, folks. We're not interested in religion. People find that hard to believe. They equate Christianity with religion. Christianity is a religion, but we don't care about Christianity. We care about your salvation. We care that you have faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only person who is both person and God who can remit our sins. We're not here to bring you to church. We're not here to try to beg money from anybody. We're not here trying to get you to come into our church. We don't have a church. What we have is glorious salvation from Jesus Christ who is God manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 tells us that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. And we can see that message strewn throughout the Bible. We can see it in the Old Testament. We can see it in the New Testament. Jesus Christ came to save the lost. He tells us himself, he did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. He came and laid down his life. He laid down his life of his own accord to pay for our sins for all time. In 2019, that message is unpopular as I just said. But the message stays the same. It doesn't matter if we agree with it or disagree. It doesn't matter what our opinion is. All that matters is that when we pass through this life, this fragile life that the Bible calls a vapor, when we die, the Bible tells us there will be judgment. That's why we're here on this rainy Saturday night because we want to help save souls who one way or another the Bible tells us all knees will bow to Jesus Christ whether on your way to hell for eternity or on your way to be with Him and the Father for an eternity. The problem is is that our souls live on. When we, when we die, when we pass from this world, excuse me sir, what's your name? Chris. Chris, Sean, nice to meet you. Hi, Mr. Bobby. I was not from fucking drenched. Yeah. I'm going to put a bit of food, you know what I mean? I don't have any food on me. I'm oh. happy to share the gospel with you. The Bible tells us that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father. 
We will be held accountable for each and every word that God has revealed to us through His Son, through the Old Testament prophets, and through the apostles. We will be responsible. The Bible tells us that we are without excuse. Now folks, we are here to share a loving message. We didn't come out on a Saturday night to share the bad news. We came out on a rainy Saturday night to help save souls, to help God the Father draw as many to Him in these last days as possible. People don't know the bad news, which we need to know for the good news. The bad news is that John 3.18 tells us we are condemned in our sins already without having been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Without Christ, ladies and gentlemen, John 3.18, I implore you to look it up for yourself. John chapter 3, verse 18 tells us indisputably, irrefutably, that if we are not in Christ, we are condemned already. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. That contains both the bad news and the good news in one verse. For because we have sinned in this world and we have all partaken of sin, the Bible tells us we are all sinners. Because we are all sinners, we have a sin debt. The wages of that sin debt is death. Not just the physical death, ladies and gentlemen. Not just the death of the human body. Not just the death of the flesh. But the spiritual death, or the second death. It's that second death, folks, that has brought us out on a rainy Saturday night to share the good news. God would that none should perish, but they all would come to repentance. Our God is a loving God. Perhaps the most famous verse of the Bible, John 3.16, tells us, For God so loved the world, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life, ladies and gentlemen. That is God's free gift to everybody who simply believes that Jesus Christ is His Son. That Jesus Christ lay down His life to pay for all of our sins for all time. A gift does not have to be paid for. When somebody gives you a Christmas gift or a birthday gift, you don't have to pay for it, right folks? Otherwise, it wouldn't be known as a gift. God's gift is free. We don't have to pay for it. All that we have to do is accept it by having faith in Jesus Christ as our one and only Savior. All we have to do is believe, the Bible tells us. If we will simply confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, believing in our hearts that God hath raised Him from the dead, we will in that moment be saved. It's a free gift. It's the most unbelievable, most perfect gift that anyone could ever receive. It's so much better than all the things of this high street. If you could take all the gifts of this high street, all of the products of all these shops, and you put them all in one beautiful house, it would be as just compared to God's free gift of eternal life simply for believing in Jesus Christ. A gift cannot be paid for, or it's no longer a gift. But if we just believe and we accept that gift, then in that moment, our God is a loving and gracious God, and through Jesus Christ, atonement that He offered, His death, burial, and resurrection, paying for our sins, 
we can be saved. We can be sanctified. We can be justified. We can be made acceptable in God's eyes. If we are rejecting Jesus Christ as the Son of God, then we become enemies of God. Right now, if we are not in Christ, we are under God's wrath. God's wrath is about to be poured out in this wicked world. For those of us who abide in the, the true Bible, and I would recommend always that you read the King James Bible, because the modern Bibles are not Bibles at all. They are corrupt perversions of God's eternal word. But if you were to read the, the true Bible, you would see that we are living in the last days. The long prophesied last days when Jesus Christ is going to return. Not only the New Testament has been prophesying that, the prophets throughout the Old Testament also spoke of Jesus Christ's return. That day is shortly to come upon us. That's why there are more and more people like us who are going out on days like this, sharing the gospel with people that we don't need to know. Because we care for all of you. We don't want anybody to be destroyed upon Jesus Christ's return. The Bible tells us very clearly that in these last days there will be mockers and scoffers walking after the lusts of their own flesh. And we see that every day, ladies and gentlemen. Mockers and scoffers walking after the lusts of their filthy flesh. We're here to share the good news. But it turns out that very few people in this whole world, not just in Winchester, very few people across the whole world care about their eternal state. We are not just these bodies. When these bodies pass from life, our soul is going to live on. You will live on in one of two locations. You'll either be with the Father and the Son in a spiritually holy, righteous, and completely good world, or you will be in eternal hell, eternal perdition for all time. Eternity is called eternity because it goes on forever. And yet the Bible tells us that this life that we're living that seems so tangible is but a vapor. This life is but a vapor, ladies and gentlemen. We have the opportunity to accept God's free gift of eternal life simply by believing on Jesus Christ. That's not what the church will tell you, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. The church is not going to tell you that. Because the churches, whether we're talking about the Anglican Church or whether we're talking about the Catholic Church, they don't give you the truth that is contained in God's Word. They keep the truth from you, just as they kept it from me, just as they keep it from my 81-year-old mother who is still in an Anglican Church. The Church doesn't exist to give you the truth. The church exists to steer you away from the truth. So we're not talking about religion. We're talking about salvation. We're talking about your eternal well-being. We're talking about how to save your soul from an eternal perdition, which the Bible so clearly depicts. The Bible so clearly depicts these last days that we're all living in, folks. It's both a terrible time and it's an unprecedented, amazing time. 
It's terrible because we're surrounded by evil, and yet it's an incredible time because we can watch the Bible coming to life before our very eyes. The Bible tells us that in these last days there will be mockers and scoffers. So we know that it's not a surprise to us. We've witnessed it all over the United Kingdom. We've witnessed it all over the world. Mockers and scoffers love to not only mock and stop privately, but they love to mock and stop with great payment. Because in that way, ladies and gentlemen, people can let their coolness show through. Inside there are wretched mess, that's why they're walking to the pub. Inside there are wretched mess, that's why they're smoking themselves to death. Inside there are wretched mess, that's why they're going from bed partner to bed partner. Inside there are mess, that's why they're popping antidepressant pills. Inside we're a mess, but we don't want to know about the solution. It's such a terrible tragedy. Our God is a loving God. Jesus Christ would that all of us would come to Him in simple, humble faith, in meekness, and just say, Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner. We're all sinners. We all know that. We all know that we're sinners. And if we would just humble ourselves and say, Dear Lord, please save me from my sin. I believe that Jesus Christ came the Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ laid down his own life so that God could offer a loving solution to a problem that has overtaken humanity. You see, without Jesus Christ, without the blameless Lamb who came to pay the price of all of our sins, there was no way for us to be forgiven. There is no way for our sin debt to be paid without that precious blameless Lamb who died, who willingly laid down his life so that we can live. And yet now we mock him. Jesus Christ died a terrible, painful, torturous death. And yet now we mock him. We spit on him. We spit on Jesus Christ who came into this world to die, to lay down his life so that we can live. And yet we mock him. Just like the Jews did 2,000 years ago. Spitting on him, smiting him on the face, whipping him, nailing him to the cross. Jesus Christ knew exactly what was going to take place before he even came into this world. Because Jesus is God manifesting the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 tells us very clearly that Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. John chapter 1 verse 1 tells us very clearly Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Jesus as God was fully God and fully man. He knew exactly what was going to happen to him when he went to the cross. He did it willingly. He willingly went to the cross and suffered a torturous death so that we could live, so that our sins can be forgiven. And yet now we mock Him. We spit on Him. We blaspheme His holy name. He's the only means by which we can be saved. And we mock Him. We despise Him. Just like they did 2,000 years ago. We are here, ladies and gentlemen, to help you. I spent three and a half decades as an ardent atheist. I have two master's degrees in philosophy. I 
was an idiot. I was a fool. I wasted all that precious time and precious money studying the best that man has to offer. The, the, the best of what man has to offer is dust. It's garbage. The wisdom of man is dust. It's garbage. I know that firsthand because I spent a lot of time and energy studying the very best of what man had to offer. Both Western traditions and also Eastern traditions. I was a nearly lifelong Buddhist meditator. I practiced yoga. I was a de uh, an atheist for three and a half decades. Until finally, I began to read God's Word in faith. And I realized it was the truth. Just as Jesus himself tells us in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That means, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one way to the Father, and it's through Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way to save your soul but through Jesus Christ. The bad news is that the moment we sin, and we have all sinned, we are condemned in our sins, the Bible tells us. The only way that we can be washed clean of our sins, the only way that we can be made acceptable in God's eyes, is if we come to Jesus Christ in faith. We don't have to go to church. We don't have to tithe 10% of our income. All we have to do is have faith in Jesus Christ and we can be saved if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and if we believe in our hearts that God hath raised Him from the dead in that very moment we will be saved and we won't have to walk around the streets almost bare naked in a rainstorm we won't be seeking sustenance by going to clubs and pubs and drinking ourselves to death or smoking skunkweed. We can instead actually recognize that our loving God wants to have a loving relationship with us. We can recognize that there's an alternative to the suffering that we're all feeling. We're all suffering, we're all broken inside. If we weren't suffering, if we weren't broken, if we weren't incomplete, we wouldn't be going out loving, we wouldn't be going to the pub, we wouldn't be trying to break our sorrows away. We would recognize that God loves us and that we can be whole, we can be free, we can be free from the bondage of sin. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life, ladies and gentlemen. Everything else pales in comparison. We could have a, a 2020 model Lamborghini it would pale in comparison to the free gift that God has offered us, offered us of eternal life. We could have all the money in the world. We could be like Solomon, who is wealthier than any other man, who had more wisdom than any other man, but who recognized that it's all vanity of vanity. It's all vexation of spirit if we are not in Christ. Vanity of vanities in vexation of spirit. That comes from the wisest man who ever lived except for Jesus Christ. 
Somebody who experienced being the king of all of Israel, who had more money than anybody had ever had, who had more wisdom than anybody had ever acquired. And he said, all this that we do in our lives is vexation of spirit, vanity of vanities. It's worthless. It's as dust. And yet we chase it. We chase after that dust as if it were gold dust. Folks, we should actually open up our minds. Listen to somebody like King Solomon who had so much wisdom, so much money, so much power. And he said, all of our labors are vanity of vanities and vexation of spirit. They're worthless. They're worthless if we have not come to Jesus Christ for our salvation. We can live a hundred years, we can have all the money we want, but we're still going to die a wretched mess without Jesus Christ. That's why we're here, folks, to show you an alternative. There's an alternative to living the way that we're living, broken, shattered dreams, broken hearts, damaged souls. There's an alternative to the way that we're living, folks, and that alternative is Jesus Christ. He is our one and only Savior. He came into this world to give Himself as a sacrifice so that we can live. Jesus Christ was the blameless Lamb. It required somebody who had lived in this world, who had never sinned, who could be offered up as that blameless sacrifice. And further, he had to have the power to raise himself from the dead to show that he is indeed the Son of God, the Alpha and the Omega, the name which is above all names, Jesus Christ, God Almighty. If we do not have Jesus Christ, we are dead in our sins right now, folks. We don't have to wait for the judgment seats. We don't have to wait before we go before God after we pass from this life. John 3.18 and a whole bunch of other scriptures tells us we are dead. We are condemned in our sins if we are not in Christ. That's why we're out here, folks, to share the good news. But good news doesn't sound like good news unless you understand the bad news. We must understand why we need salvation before we can see that salvation is so precious. If we don't know what happens without salvation, salvation doesn't seem like it's necessary. Salvation seems like it's maybe not a big deal. But when we know that we're going to live on our souls are going to live on for an eternity and our souls are going to be in hell by the fall, then the good news begins to actually make sense and sound like good news. Because without it, we are condemned in our sins already. John 3.18. Read it for yourself. John chapter 3, verse 18. If we are not in Christ, we are condemned already. The good news came just two verses before. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, and that means every single one of us, ladies and gentlemen, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All we have to do, the Bible tells us, is believe. The Catholic Church and the Anglican Church will never tell you that because they're liars and deceivers. That's right, the Bishop of Winchester is a liar and an antichrist. You won't hear that message, will you? The Bishop of Winchester is an antichrist liar and deceiver. 
The Anglican Church exists to steer people away from the truth of the gospel that anybody can read for themselves in the Bible. You don't need a priest. A priest is likely to steer you away from the truth. You don't need a church. A church is very likely to steer you away from the truth. What you need is Jesus Christ, who never lies. God's eternal word never lies, but the churches lie all the time. The Anglican Church exists to prepare people for the Antichrist in these last days. The Catholic Church exists to prepare people for the rise of the Antichrist in the end times. Oh, shut the fuck up. The Church of England is preparing its flock to worship the Antichrist, which the Bible tells us is soon to arise to power. The Catholic Church and the Anglican Church and all the other established churches are lying to everybody. We're not here to preach Christianity. We're here to preach Jesus Christ, the Gospel. The Gospel message is completely different than what the churches teach. We are sharing the truth of the Bible that you can check for yourself, you can confirm it for yourself in your own home, in the library, on your telephone. But the quote-unquote truths of the church, you can also confirm, are in fact lies by the same means. You can confirm that they are lies by picking up the Bible and comparing what the churches say versus what the Bible says. They are like night and day, ladies and gentlemen, but because we don't abide in God's Word, we have been kept ignorant of these things. Just as we are kept ignorant of these things, wicked wars that we have been fighting all these years. We're kept ignorant because we lend our ears and our eyes and our minds to the media that lies to us all the time. The churches are likewise lying to us all the time. The churches have been telling us lies for centuries. We know that because we can read it in the Bible. Compare what the churches teach, compare that to what the Bible says. And we can see that the churches are lying and always have lied. The Church of England doesn't teach anybody the saving gospel. That's why a church exists, to share the gospel. We were all commanded by Jesus Christ to preach the gospel to all the world, to every creature. But these churches never teach the real gospel. Thereby we know that they're not true Christian churches. Because only a true church is going to teach the true gospel. The Anglican church has been lying to their flocks for centuries. The Catholic church has been lying to its flocks for centuries. The churches want you to go to hell, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible, on the other hand, will give you the truth if you'll just humble yourselves and open it up and read it. I think everybody here probably can read. I think everybody here has probably read Harry Potter. But if we just take the time to read the Bible, we'll realize the predicament that we're in that without Christ we're dead in our sins. If we don't read the Bible, if we don't listen to the street preacher, then we're never going to get the truth. We're just going to wag our heads like the next person. And we're going to go straight to hell. A literal fiery hell that everybody thinks is like a Halloween rock concert. Thank you.
not going to make it to Halloween Rock concert when you get there, ladies and gentlemen. Physical life, there is the judgment. It's the judgment that has brought us out on this rainy Saturday night because we care for all of you. We genuinely care for each and every one of you. And we don't want you to be condemned in your sins. That's why we're here trying our best to share the good news of Jesus Christ, not the lies of the church. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Life without end. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, our soul goes on for an eternity. Our soul will live on for an eternity. It will have to live on in heaven, or it will live on in hell. That whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Life without end. And the rain came down. John 14, 6 says, in Jesus Christ's own words, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Did you hear that, folks? Jesus Christ's own word. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Tell him to make him stop raining. We thank you so much for your support, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for listening. We want, we want to let you know that God loves each and every one of you. He would that you would all come to repentance. But ultimately, but ultimately, we can't save you. We can only give you the message. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's up to each and every one of us. Are we going to receive the message? Or are we going to reject the message? Are we going to receive the message? Or are we going to reject the message? Because it's not our opinion that matters. It's not our opinion that matters. It's reality. Thank you so much, Winchester. We so appreciate your support. We thank you for listening to this message. And we ask that God the Father in Jesus Christ's mighty name bless this city. We pray that as many as have heard this message will come to Jesus Christ in faith. And God bless you all. Thank you for listening.